I used to have a restaurant in Syria and I was fine. Everything was absolutely fine. I lived in the village and everyone knew me. When you were unwell, three quarters of the village would visit with plates of food and anything they thought you needed. That was the kind of place it was. The only thing wrong was the corruption. The family of the Syrian president and the Alawite group that they are part of are only 8% of the population, but they control all the amenities. And whatever you need, you have to pay them to get it. This bribery culture is in the army, police, all the offices, all the government offices. But I was okay because I was paying the bribes. <laughs> One of my sons was 20 years old when the war started. He had to do his compulsory service in the army. He went to his interview and they gave him a few days before his service began to get ready. At the exact same time, those peaceful demonstrations that started the civil war started in a little village nearby. My son went along in his civilian clothes to join in. The Syrian army attacked this demonstration. They shot a number of people. He didn't want to join the army, so he shot himself in the leg. When my son returned to the army with his wound, he was told he'd been seen at the protests and that they believed he was trying to avoid national service. They put him in prison. Eventually, he was released and he took up his duties. We were now in a war. Unrest was everywhere. There were incidents. We had a Kurdish street in the village. And one woman that I knew there had a son. Well, one day the boy went out. As he was walking, soldiers shot him in the heart. He lay there, dying in the street and village people who were shocked tried to go and help him. But the soldiers held them back with their guns, shooting at anyone who tried to help. No one could get close to the boy until he had bled out and died. He was 17. After some time of service, my son was granted 48 hours of leave to visit home. He'd been given money to return, but between the village and Lebanon there is only a river. So he crossed the river and went to Lebanon. your son? And I said that he'd gone back to the army, which is what I believed. The army said that no, he had not returned and must have gone somewhere else like Lebanon. In the end, the army attacked us. They pushed my wife out of the house with the back of a gun against her back. My wife was holding our youngest daughter, who was about two years old then. They burned down my house. Then, they took me and my other son. They took us to prison. They started by hitting our feet again and again with a stick. They would beat us senseless. 
anywhere on our bodies they could reach before hanging us upside down for up to 16 hours. They tied our feet to the ceiling. I still have these marks on my leg from that. They would sometimes hang us from our wrists, but with our feet not quite touching the ground. It made it much harder. They put out cigarettes on our skins, stomach, back, face. The place would depend on that wood. I was one of the least tortured, though. There were people there who were hurt a lot more. God knows how much they were tortured. Occasionally, we would get an egg and a tiny bit of bread to eat. When they brought food, they would pour it on the floor and let us lick it from there. They would give us lots of water to drink and I would be happy because I was thirsty. But then, they tied my penis so that I couldn't pass urine. I now have chronic kidney disease and I think this is why. The worst thing was that they hurt my son and I in the presence of each other. I was tortured in front of my son and my son was tortured in front of me. We had to watch each other be tortured. This was so very difficult. The hardest thing I have ever had to do. So أصعب لحظات حياتي هاي أصعب شيء وشو حابين تعرفوا يا ليك These men call us Sunnis pigs they say that killing a Sunni is the highest and first degree of worship. And the more they wanted to worship, the worse the torture was. They asked me why I had friends who were not in my sect, Shiites, Christians, all sects. But I am a sociable person. I never really saw a difference in people in other sects. People are people. After 29 days, my uncle paid a big bribe. And only then were we released. The man that my uncle bribed told us it wouldn't be safe for us in our village anymore. We, my daughter and my wife who had stayed with my mother while I was in prison, my son and I, spent a year traveling from village to village trying to disappear. We were always afraid. We were in terror. After a year, we paid a bribe of about $2,000 to a man connected to the government. He arranged for me, my wife and my daughter to leave Syria and go to Lebanon, officially. My son, who'd been in the army, was already there. And my other son paid his own bribe and joined us about a month later. So, we all made it to Lebanon. I've got sisters in Lebanon, so we went to stay with one of them. Someone from my village had lent me a little money to start a restaurant there. My restaurant did well. So well that after six or seven months, the landlord wanted the building back, which meant I lost my restaurant. But during that time, I was able to pay back the debt to my neighbor at least. My sons worked as painters and decorators to support the family, but it was barely enough. By this time, my kidneys were starting to make me feel unwell. My wife has psychiatric problems. She's on a lot of drugs now. I had put our names forward to the United Nations to be relocated. 
Almost straight away they offered to resettle us. I got more into debt, and there was less and less reason to stay. It was time to go. My most important reason for leaving was to get the health care we needed, but also I wanted to make sure my daughter got an education. Now she speaks English, but she doesn't teach me any. <laughs> The son who'd been in the army had been in prison because he was in Lebanon illegally. So he's not with us. I do miss the community spirit in Syria. When I was a restaurant owner, I used to make a big pot of coffee for everyone in the village. I would take coffee around to everyone. The people in the shops, supermarkets, restaurants, everyone knew me. Being a stranger here is a rather bitter feeling. Would I go back to Syria? Under the current regime, absolutely not. But if the regime changed, then yes, I would return. <laughs> <laughs>